And welcome everybody to the Scarlet and Great podcast with a very special guest today, B. Moses himself, my brother from another mother, Brandon Moses, host of Buckeye Sports Talk with B. Moses on Facebook if you want to look him up. And uh, by the way, we'll be giving all his information in the description below, so please look him up on Twitter, look him up on Facebook, great engagement. By the way, I will say this for Brandon, nobody on planet Earth will keep you as up to date of what's going on with Buckeye Sports as Brandon will. I don't care. If you want to follow all the websites on Twitter and everything, he is a funnel. Go to his Facebook page, and you will know what's going on with everybody. Am I right, Brandon? Exactly, Mundo. Yeah, absolutely, bro. That's that's one of my main things, man. One stop shop, brother. One stop oh shop. I, I tried to keep up with you for like a day, and I was like, forget it. I'm tapping <laughs> out. He, he's got me. I, my goodness, and it's like he he. he He's all over it all day, and you gotta you gotta appreciate people like that because honestly, I don't want to go to a thousand sites, you know, and see what's right. going on. So I go to Brandon's page, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. Awesome. <laughs> so, Brandon, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm great, man. It's uh, you know, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and it's uh, a, it was a beautiful day today. It was I think it hit seventy. Oh boy. And yeah, you know, we've been getting pounded with snow and cold and. So it was a, a nice, uh, positive, sweet energy across the 614, as you can see on the shirt today. So I'm in a pretty good mood, man. That's good, man. It's just about, about you're getting Florida weather up there, and that's nice. We, we love it down here. It's year around 70 degrees. We're good with it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that we got it like that. I, just, I love I'm enjoying it. Um, anyways. So we're gonna talk about the rub in the weather. <laughs> I, wait, I got to. I, you know, I got to. I got to. I, I do it on Twitter every now and again. So when it gets to be down like forty-five, y'all don't know the struggle. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, um, we got a couple topics we're gonna cover tonight. Uh, well, it's gonna be a little bit longer show. It'll be about a half hour. We want to talk about oh a position battle going on with the running back situation at Ohio State. We just talked about quarterbacks of Dylan Freeman. Now we're gonna talk about running backs of B Moses. And then we're going to talk about Buckeye hoops a little bit because we do have an important game. It's not Buckeye directly tonight, but it is Minnesota Northwestern going on right now. Minnesota's crushing them at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. That will the winner of that game will play Ohio State tomorrow for in the Big Ten tournament. So we'll, we'll obviously some happenings there, and we'll talk about what's going on late as of late with the Buckeye basketball. Anyways, Brandon, back to the main sport of Ohio State yeah, football. Yeah. It's the main. Hey, it is king in Ohio State, and it is what it is. Even even Holtman yeah. will acknowledge that. Um, yep. What's going on with the running back situation, man? How I mean, we we the, the list of the guys we got right now: Master Teague, Mayan Williams, Marcus Crowley, Steel Chambers, who's rumored to maybe switch to defense, but I don't know if he will or won't. Uh, who's but but he's shown flashes. He, he's shown flashes. And then of course you got the two young bucks in there, and Trevian Henderson, who's the guy everybody's waiting to see. And they got Evan Pryor, who's everybody seems to be forgetting about, but he's yes. also he ain't no slouch. So not at all. Um, I, what do you what do you make of this, man? This is a cluster right now after Trey Sermon leaving some big shoes to fill. I mean, it's it's very fascinating because obviously the number one position battle everybody is going to be watching, including the national media, is the quarterback battle. We sure. all know that, but because of that. Uh, because of the quarterback position being so important, it's overshadowing, which would probably be the biggest, most intriguing battle, which is the running back position. Mm -hmm. um, so because we're so deep there with talent and options, um, especially coming off the of last season. So I, I really like that you put that poll out there today to oh, yeah. kind of gauge the public eye to see what they're saying, um, <laughs> because it's just hilarious. I mean, listen, I love Travion Henderson. Uh, I cannot wait to see him in a Buckeye uniform. Um, but we both know, man, we know that it's it's more to it than just, you know, uh, coming in five-star running back who's fast and, you know, and out, can out, outrun people. So Master Teague, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's his to lose bottom line. I'm just going to come out right at the gate. It's his to lose. Uh, we can argue that the other backs are better, more skilled, more talented, um, but it's his to lose. So it's going to be interesting to see if someone can dethrone him um, between now and fall camp. Um, but I'll stop right there because I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I hear you. He, it, that's what it is. I mean, people might want not want to hear that, but it's just the truth. Yeah, I you know I'm, I'm we can come out of the gate with that point, and it's like you know it. Master Teague, I'm convinced will be the starter. And here's the here's my reasoning, Brandon. We've got a brand new quarterback who's no matter who it is, whichever three has never thrown a collegiate pass. You know, mm -hmm. none of them have. Now, two of them have scored collegiate touchdowns, but none of them has thrown a pass in this offense. Right. They're all capable of doing it, but 
they're going to have the blessing of an experienced offensive line with experienced bookend tackles. They're going to have the, the blessing of a tight end who's been around the block. He's going in his fourth year. You're going to, uh, a, who's a very talented guy, Rucker. You're going to have the blessing of Olave and Wilson on the on the bookends of the receiving position, uh, along with other guys who are now young and up and coming, like Jamison Williams and Fleming and G. Scott and, and J- of course, Jackson Smith and the Jigba and everybody. Uh, not to, not to, dis- I'm not trying to disqualify anybody if I forgot anybody. Um, but these are now they got some experience under the belt, especially the, the big dogs on the outside. And you got, you know, a running back and Master T, whether you like it or not, the most experienced running back coming back on the roster. And he's been in Ryan Day's offense for the longest period of time. And Tony Alford loves him like a son. And he's had some moments. He's not without, you know, a good run here, a good game here and there. I'm not saying I don't think he's the most skilled or qualified running back on the roster. But I do think he's the most experienced. You understand? You got to have that young quarterback back there, and this you got to have a running back who understands blitz pickups. You got to yes. understand uh, escape routes. You got to understand uh, what what do I do in, in these in every situation? You know, the quarterback needs my help because the quarterback's not going to always know, mm-hmm. and sometimes that running back needs to make a call. And you're going to have to have smarter guys around you that have been around in the block and have know the offense. Every 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 little bit adds a cushion to the quarterback's development. And I got to believe that they're going to go with a guy they trust and master T who, by the way, is a little bit like a JT Barrett, maybe not the most skilled at his position on the roster, but he does everything right off the field. Yeah. He does everything right in the film room. He's got character, quality, leadership. He's all of that. And the coaches trust that. And I, I'm not saying none of these other guys do, but he's the most you know, evident of it. He's the one who's shown it the most so far. I think these other guys are great kids. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody, but I just think it, no matter what Crowley, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Teague will be the starter. And I think maybe a Crowley or Henderson later in the year starts to take some reps and Mayan Williams starts to take some reps from him. But Teague will be the starter. And, and, but the plurality of people in our poll from about 180 people voting, not a small sample size, but they put it out just recently, said that they think Henderson, 40% say they think Henderson's going to be the starter, Brandon. Hmm. I mean, listen, if, if <laughs> and uh, thank God they're bringing back the uh, NCAA football game soon for oh, us yeah. all to enjoy and love like we once did. If, if we I all had deserve a, game, a free right? game. <laughs> you, you said what? We all deserve a free game after this long wait. Man, listen, at least uh, give us a six month trial or something to download yeah. it for free. Um, but I mean, if I was playing the NCAA football game on PlayStation or whatever, I would start Trey Henderson. Mm-hmm. Right. But we know, like what Corey just said, it's just not how it works. You know, you're going to get your, your quarterback, your young quarterback killed. If you got a freshman in there who doesn't not only is not able to physically take on a senior linebacker mm-hmm. uh, blitzing up the middle to get his quarterback, but also not know where the linebacker is coming from. So those are key, key, key things. Listen, Master T, I think he's a, a great kid. I think he's an average back. Um, you know, he, he does some really good things. He has great straight line speed. Uh, I don't know. What's a good comparison? Brandon saying is Brandon, Brandon saying yeah, a good comparison? I, that's a fair comparison. He doesn't move laterally really well. Uh, if he gets, right. if he gets going North South, he's okay. The, pro, I, the biggest problem I have with Teague more than anything is that he, he's a, you can ankle tackle him. Like you can just right. breathe on his ankles and he goes down and I'm like, God, yeah, we, we got geeked over this guy's physique for over the last couple of years. Like, man, this guy is built like the Hulk. Right. Doesn't matter if you can breathe on his ankles, and they go, it goes down. I mean, it's like he goes down a little too easy at times. Uh, not if you go head on with him; he could knock you down. But yeah, you take out the engine, and he just can't. He can't make that first guy kind of miss his feet, his footwork. And uh, Henderson, obviously, you 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 think all that speed, and you're like, oh man, imagine that in the open field. You know what Henderson would be like to me? I think, in my opinion, like Curtis Samuel's freshman year, he's gonna get spot mm-hmm. duty. He's gonna play a little bit because he's too athletic not to. I yeah. Just, just the people who think he's going to start is like you, you're not. It's almost like the same folks who look at a quarterback and say, "Well, he can throw it a mile, therefore he should start." It's there's so much more to it than that, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, I wish it were that easy, but it's not. Well, uh, and also let me say this: um, I do think that a Mayan Williams or even a Crowley has a chance to overtake Master Teague for mm-hmm. for those carries because this is kind of how I see it in my mind. I could be wrong, but this is how I see it. You have a cluster of Mayan Williams, Master Teague, and Marcus Crowley. You have mm-hmm. that cluster. Then you have Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor. Now, just as a side note, 
I personally believe still Chambers is going to move the linebacker. I think that's going to happen. It hasn't been announced yet. There's just not room for him. He's a he's he he has flashed, but his fumbling issues really put him in a doghouse uh, and put him really behind the eight ball. So I think he's going to go to linebacker. But with that said, I think it's going to be a battle between those two clusters for to get those carries. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just how I see it. I don't see Evan Pryor and Henderson both getting uh, a decent amount of carries. You might see Evan Pryor getting, uh, you know, and uh, mop up dude and get some carries. But as far as consistently down the line, those two kids have a, a similar skill set, more speed, more wiggle than the Crowley's Maya Williams. Now, I ain't slipping on Maya. I know he got a little mean jump cut for the meatball, mm -hmm. but he's not Henderson or Pryor. So I'm curious to see how the spring will shake out with that whole race between those two clusters. And that's just my, that's how I see it uh, from the running back position, the uh, snaps. Yeah. I, and I actually agree with it. I think Mayan was a nice surprise last year because we, none of us had, I mean, nobody had him on the radar, you know, they right. thought he was going to be over recruited and then, you know, he's going to be gone, but looks like a guy who can actually play a little bit, uh, maybe even more than a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to say this though, you're going to read reports, man. From the Nevada Bucks of the world, from the boarding houses, from the yeah, they're all all summer. You're gonna be reading. Don't count this guy out. This guy, oh, this guy might be creeping up, man. This guy, you're gonna read. I've been reading this for years, man. I'm so sick of reading this crap. It's not that these people don't know anything. They just like to sell, and I understand that aspect of it. But it's like, I don't know how many times I've heard it's this guy's year. Doesn't see the field. You know, it, it's like, okay, can we? Maybe you had a good practice, and that's you're reading a little too much out of it. You know, it's not something along those lines. Um, I, you're going to be hearing, "Hey, believe it or not, Evan Pryor's overtaking Henderson." Or you know, you're going to you're going to hear <laughs> yeah. Henderson's overtaking uh, Mayan Williams for that backup. It's like, guys, they're probably going to be in different roles personally on the offense anyway. Uh, so in today's offenses, man, you know that you know as well as I do that uh you know not every running back is played the same exact way so yeah um i, I don't know it just gets a little bit you're gonna reread now just like folks just we get geeked about things all the time like jalen harris is he was physique last year it's like oh this is his breakout year well no it wasn't or we talk about uh god bless him i mean i'm not trying to rip on jeremiah but i remember when Mayan Williams, who did turn out to be good but well, we were worried about that running back depth and they Brian Williams got in shape and they showed a picture of him and abs. And he goes, I thought you all were worried about the running back position. I'm like, okay, just cause the kid has abs. Don't mean That became like an inside <laughs> joke with me and Johnny, like, well, he's got abs. We're fine. You know? So it's like what football player doesn't have abs <laughs> other than offensive linemen. Uh, My Mayan Williams look like he's 38 with a 401k and, Three, three kids in a house with a picket fence. He looks like a grown man. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> he, he runs like a 20-year-old kid, thankfully. But, right. Uh, uh, I, I ain't going to lie, but I, I did love seeing my own truck going through. Uh, oh, uh, man. Oh, man, that was beautiful. I, I, I do like the fact he, he runs with mean intentions. I think he almost runs in a way that we expected Teague to run, and it's kind of been a little bit different than Teague, a little different style, but – uh, I agree with you, man. I think later in the year, people will start taking reps, starts taking snaps, you know, because the competition gets a little bit better and whatnot. I do think what's going to happen, though, is you're going to have Teague start and like against Oregon somehow he pulls off a 180 yard game or something like that right. out of nowhere. I mean, can you see that happening where people then all of a sudden say, hey, we're solved at running back. We're good, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely can. I mean, listen, and just to kind of back up to what Corey just said, y'all, listen, man. We've both been around for a long time. I know me and Corey have been following Ohio State for years and years and years. A word of advice. Listen, Corey's right. Sites like to sell memberships and clicks. So there's there's some embellishment to some of the reports. You know, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, like, you know, you take it in and you balance it out in your own mind. You know what I mean? A kid might have had a good day in practice. That doesn't mean he's about to be All-American next week. Just, yeah. you know, keep it in mind and keep it balanced and just, you know, keep your, your emotions in check. That's easy said and done for some people. But, yes, I can definitely see um, a situation. Shoot, to your point, Corey, the beginning of this last season, people wanted to throw away Trey Sermon. Trey yeah. Sermon was trash. You know what I mean? But, you and I were hyping him up before the season, I remember. <laughs> yes, I was like, watch out for this dude. And I was I was sitting there like, oh man, maybe I was wrong too. But I didn't. <laughs> we were, we were know, questioning for that. <laughs> right. I didn't blast them publicly, and I just sat back and wait. But people just didn't want to consider the fact that we were in a wonky COVID year, mm. lack of reps, a lot, you know, a lot of factors in place. So the point is, yes, people are going to overreact. 
good or bad. And it's going to be funny to watch after uh, the Oregon game uh, and see what, what people say depending on what happens. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that, that'll be the telltale game of where our running game is early on in the year. And if Master T continues to be the guy or not, uh, I personally think he's probably going to end up having a big game and you're going to have all the, it's going to be like a tough Borland battle all over again, where the people who don't like him won't like him no matter what. The people who do like him will always support him no matter what. So right. it, it's it's just like, okay, let's just put the best man on the field. But right now the best man on the field, like we're going to, to sum up, ain't always the guy who can run the fastest. Sometimes it's a guy who can do a little, a little bit of everything to help out the offense. So, mm-hmm. And until Henderson can pass block and pass protect and knows the protections, he ain't going to be a three down back. It just, yeah. It's just simple. Uh, that's just football. I'll say, I'll say this, though. I, I do believe Maya Williams does have a realistic shot if he holds up in, in pass pro and blitz protection mm-hmm. and understanding the offense as well as, if not more than Master T. He has a legit shot to uh, to take that starting spot. But, yeah, the uh, you know, the money is on Master T. He was Master third T. in my poll. He was, like, around 28%. So he was, oh, was third. He? Yeah, he, a lot of people do believe in him, and I, I have to, you know what? That's all merit. He won that yeah. in the, with people because he, he came in as a three star that nobody believed in. Oh yeah, actually, Corey, I'm glad you brought that up. I looked his ranking up earlier, and I knew he was a three star, mm-hmm. but I'm like, where was he ranked nationally? So he uh, was the 45th ranked running back in two four seven sports and ranked 627th nationally according to two forty seven sports. That's crazy. I mean, like, you know, as far as the talent we get and the perception, mm. and you said he runs with a chip and like, he's angry. Yeah. Now, I know at Winton Woods, he ran physical. Mm-hmm. However, I wonder if he's taking it up a notch because of that three-star overlooked chip on his shoulder. I also think it's just he was going to go to Iowa, Iowa State, and then Ohio State came calling. He said, I'm not blowing this opportunity. I'm Every time I get on that field, I'm going to make something of it, and he's doing it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He's, I'm a fan. He won me over. I did. I was. I again. I thought he was gonna be gone in a year or two. But Same. Got, God bless you, dude. Anyway, moving on to OSU hoops, man. I think we covered the running back position pretty well. Um, Brandon, what happened, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I mean, listen, man. Uh, it's just funny watching the fan base react. Uh, you know, to football. Uh, questions and issues and basketball questions and issues. It's a lot less grace with the basketball team I've noticed from our fans. Um, but I, I try with everything. I try to, you know, step back and, and just use logic and not be so emotional, even though I'm not just a fan, you know, I've played basketball in my life, you know, and football. Play you got that sports. corner three. I heard from what I understand. <laughs> yeah. I still got to be corner three. Ask about me. But for real, like with basketball, I think when I watch, I, I think like a coach. I'm watching the game like a coach. Mm-hmm. So I get really upset when I see things happen. And going back to, I almost threw my shoe at the screen when Justice <laughs> suing through the behind the back pass to the other team, to the scum player. And then that right there pretty much lost the game. It seemed like that right there just broke the dam for the four game skid uh, down the stretch. Um, you know, Holtman so, ain't teaching that, man. He, you know, he ain't in the practice and saying, yeah, throw him behind the back if you can. You know, oh, he, man. You know he ain't it, teaching that. It was just like, what are you doing? And listen, I'm not going to bash a kid, but it was definitely a mystifying moment. Like, come on, Justice. We want justice, justice and peace. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it, it was frustrating. But on the flip side, to balance this out, look who they lost to. Okay, this is me and my mind, trying to mm-hmm. be fair and logical and balanced. They lost to four tournament teams. I believe Sparty is going to make the, uh, make the uh, yeah, yeah. tournament. So There's no way they're not. That actually helped their resume, yeah. So. And they beat Illinois, a top five Oh, they did? Wow, I forgot. Yes. Wow. So – I mean, like, Sparty is in. We lost to two uh, – I'm sorry, four tournament teams, and three mm-hmm. of those teams are top ten teams, top five, and they were all close games. Now, the frustration comes in that we probably should have won or had a really good chance to win, but we just really made mistakes down the stretch um, in each one of those games. I mean, so that kind of balances out the, Well, maybe not Iowa. I mean, uh, Iowa kind of just – Oh, yeah, out. okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, Ex- for the with the exception of Iowa. Because, honestly, I've, I'm thinking the games in the forefront of my mind are uh, Michigan State, uh, Michigan game, and Illinois. That oh, Illinois yeah. game was really crushing because we really had that game. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Iowa was definitely we, – we got – Although we, we got, were we did bring it within two, and I remember you were in the group chat. Man, it's a two-point game. Everybody's like, ah, oh, Brandon thinks. <laughs> sure did, man. I was like, come on. But uh, but I do think um, 
Uh, tomorrow is important, in my opinion. I think tomorrow is a reset, a potential reset. We lost to both these teams, Minnesota and Northwestern. I know Northwestern looks like they're going to uh, take it. I haven't checked the score lately. Um, but the Northwestern game was another early season blunder. We should have won that game. And uh, we we, we yeah. choked at the end. We can beat Northwestern, but this team has to uh, play better. Kyle Young, I wonder how his health is. He hasn't seen the same. I know he was concussed and was getting back from that. He just seems off. Mm. So hopefully he can get reengaged. And um, and uh, Dwayne Washington needs to stay his competent self and not his loose cannon don't force self. Force the game, you know. Let the game yeah. come to you. Don't force it. Yes, yes. Uh, and get and make sure we get Liddell involved. If Liddell is not open, if they're doubling him, make them pay. But mm. do not at least try to get the ball to him. He is our best, most talented player. Easily. I mean, those are – those are just simplified overall points that I believe are huge for this team without going too in, too in depth right now. No, I hear you, man. When they lost to Michigan, I I, I would let it go. I, yeah, justice pass and everything. I get it. it. They made some mistakes down there. But I, I was like, they fought against a really good team, played hard, and they, they only lost by five. You know, it is what it is. And even they were only down by three with some time left. They had a, like a legitimate kind of shot if they missed free throw here and there. So they were in the game the entire game. Right. Uh, Michigan State was a bummer. I was still, I was, I, I actually saw that coming. I, I had a Michigan fan in my DMs like, man, you all play tough. I'm like, yeah, we're probably going to skid now. And, um, and, it, and the Iowa game, I even threw that out. I was like, geez, they're just bad right now. And then, but Illinois, when you're up by four with like a minute to go, mm. you lose, and, and you lose by, what, what do they lose by five or so? Uh, I, that, the, what frustrated me is whatever we were doing in the second half was working. You know, working our rotations and getting the moving the ball around. And EJ got some open looks and was draining them. How in that whole four game stretch of losing, Brandon, most frustrating aspect. And I put this on Holtman more, and I hate blaming Holtman because I like him, but yeah, right now I'm not. Too, and he would even admit nobody's happy with him, so he's he's not blind to it. But look, if Washington forces the ball one or two times, you have gotta call a timeout or. Get, do so. I don't know. Fake a water spill like Jason Kidd. I don't know. Do something <laughs> <laughs> to, to get Classic. your team over there, so you can talk to them and say, Dwayne, what are you doing, buddy? Um, and but letting them do it time and time and time again. I'm like, what? We're not running the offense. EJ's got the hot hand. How does he not get the ball? How? How? I'm sorry. Look, if I'm the point guard, and my and my boy EJ is just lighting it up, like this dude's making them from all over. I he's he's our guy. He's, you know, he's first team Big Ten for a reason. I say, I don't need to dribble this out. I'm going right to my guy, and I'm getting him in an open look. I'm doing whatever I have to do to get him an open look. Yes. And uh, I, I'm sorry. I just, I, I'm not. And look, I like Dwayne Washington. I don't dislike the kid. He's been a very good player for us overall. He's got a net positive for what. Yeah. But that moment, those few minutes there, or what, maybe two minutes, I don't know. His he went brain dead. I it shocked me. I, I was like, that's, when you talk about throwing a shoe at the TV, I want to throw my TV out the window. I was like, this is, I can't do it. Triggered! Like, You're oh, taking me back geez. to that moment. Oh, man, listen. <laughs> as as an avid hooper, and just, just for the love of the game, there are certain things in the game that is just basic, uh, you know, AAU level, rec ball level, you know, mm -hmm. type of things that you should know. Yeah, You should know. And the play, it was uh, that whole three three minute stretch against Illinois. Uh, it was, I, be, I believe, back to back possessions, specifically one that we could have ran the clock out. We could have worked clock, but Dwayne Washington wanted to drive mm -hmm. and force it. Mm -hmm. And it was well defended. And they went down and scored. I believe on that play, they got an and one on that following play, yes, I believe. Yes, they did. It was, um, it was a bad call, in my opinion, but they got it anyway. Yes, so. it was definitely a bad call, but the bad. Uh, uh, the lack of understanding of the moment created mm -hmm. that play. And it was very frustrating because in that moment, you're up four, you milk clock, you work, you run your set, or, you know, you do whatever you need to do to get a good look, the best look possible with your best player. Okay. Now, if their shot blocker is not on the court and it's a wide open lane, okay, fine. But that was not the case. So the lack of awareness just frustrates me. That is basic level basketball. And like you said with Holtman, I couldn't see what he was doing. But if you're not yelling, screaming your head off, or calling a timeout to get this corrected, that mm -hmm. is on the coach. Because that's inexcusable. That game 
was blown because of lack of awareness and lack of understanding. And just, I don't know what Dwayne Washington was thinking, man. Work Back it out and work the clock, man. And you got several guys who can make mid-range jump shots. C.J. Walker can make them. I think he was on the yeah. court at the time. Uh, I, it, you talk about awareness. What about Aaron? Aaron's just throwing up from 30 feet thinking the clock was out. It's yeah. like uh. it, 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 no no awareness, court awareness at all. And I remember, you know, Walker, he's doing the, you know, think. You know, to, right, to right. Aaron. I saw that. And look, Aaron's played good defense against Illinois. He doesn't do it night in and night out, but he did against Illinois. He did. But I will say this. If you're going to need somebody on the perimeter for defense, get Jallo in there because, Aaron, you're there to shoot, man. Right. And your shooting's been off. And look, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus because they have a slump. People have slumps. It, it happens. But right now, Aaron, you got it. We need a third score. That's just simple. We need a third score right now. Uh, EJ's doing his part. Dwayne, for the most part, is doing his part. But against Michigan, Dwayne had a great game. So it's yeah. it's like he's not perfect every night, but he had 30 points on 12 of 18 shooting. That's efficient, you know. So uh, and one turnover that game. So he he did his job. EJ, I was surprised he's only averaging 16 points a game. I thought he was upwards towards 20, you know, because he's always got, he seems like he's always around that 19, 20 range. Yeah. Uh, and not to mention EJ, to his credit, turns it on when we need it to be turned on. So. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm praying he comes back next year. You just never know with some of these kids, unfortunately, because I know he's going to be having agents in his ear. Um, I, I don't know. I, you're right though. All that aside, all the bad memories aside, 18 and eight, big fifth seed in the Big Ten tournament. They got Northwestern and Minnesota tomorrow. Right now, Minnesota's up at the half as we rec- as we record this, 27 to 20. Okay. Northwestern has come back. They were down 16 to two. So they have made a little bit of a comeback. Uh, whoever we play tomorrow, I kind of hope it's Northwestern for whatever the Minnesota just has our number. I don't know why I, that seven footer is, is, is tough. Northwestern, I think we can beat. Um, you're right; it's a reset, guys. The season's over. That part of it's done. That slide is over with. That's part of the regular season. That slide is part of the regular season. That no longer exists. Now it's a new ball game. Now it's what, how many games can you win in the Big Ten tournament to establish the better seating in the in for March. You're yep. going to March no matter what now. We know that. But what are you going to do about your seeding? Because you could end up a two seed. You really mm-hmm. could if you pull this thing off and do it really far into the Big Ten tournament. But if you lose tomorrow, you're probably a three or four. Yep. You know, and Easy. you're not going to get the matchups you want to get. So do, do we want to make it to Sweet 16 round for the first time in God knows how long uh, and, and kind of help ourselves along that way? Or do we want to make it the, the road that much tougher, lose another game in a row? And uh, then all of a sudden, even no matter that, even though the four game slides part of the regular season is gone now, you you, you have it in your mind. I like, we just can't win. What can we do to win? And you know, Brandon, as well as like, sports, is all about confidence. Yeah. All about confidence, mentality, and confidence. If you don't think you, if you just nothing, you if you feel like not, nothing you're doing is right, then it just carries over to the next game. You know, and and in and, and, and the uncertainty of March Madness, when you're facing that first opponent, you're, you you like, I haven't. I've lost five games in a row. I don't even know who this team is. How am I going to beat them? You right. know. So and, and and it's all about and like in basketball, you you you're, even no matter if you're Reggie Miller, Steph Curry, whatever, until you see that first shot go in, that's when you feel good about it. And mm-hmm. we need to get that win. We need to get a couple wins on her to feel good about it again. I agree. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Tomorrow is absolutely key uh, mm-hmm. to to uh, have some confidence going into the tournament period going into the tournament on a six game i'm sorry it would be a five game technically losing streak would not be good um now obviously that's a very definition of backing into the tournament (laughs) yeah exactly so i mean i know some pundits have said what this team needs is to uh get out of this league and sure there's some there's some uh some logic to that i guess you know big 10 is tough i get that but come on man these games are winnable these are Mm -hmm. winnable games this team is better than what they played Mm-hmm. Uh, they show the capabilities. They just need to handle business, man. And so, yeah, I'm definitely looking to see how we bounce back tomorrow and play uh, in the effort because also against Illinois, in my opinion, at least in the first half, I saw lack of effort. Yeah. They weren't matching the energy from Illinois. Um, and that's just a no, no, man. You you can't lack of effort can't be an issue right now. I can see if you just, they're shooting, you know, 65%, uh, you know, from three or something crazy and you just can't, they're just shooting the lights out. Okay. You just can't do nothing about that typically, Mm -hmm. but when the effort's not matched, come on y'all. So anyway, with that said, 
I do feel confident this team is good enough to make a run, turn the corner and make a run and put up a good fight and, and, and show well for Buckeye Nation. I believe that. Absolutely. I mean, we believe in these guys. I mean, I, granted, you're talking about the fan base earlier. And yeah, you know what? You're not wrong. I mean, the, the football fan base comes out at the wrong time all the time. It's just like if you lose a game, you're, you're garbage, you're trash, you're, you're whatever. Right. Fire not understanding, yeah, they're not understanding that basketball is a lot, lot different of a sport. I mean, football, if you lose a game, your season might be kind of done. Basketball, you could lose several games and still have a shot at right. making a run. So uh, I'm not saying this is a national title team, obviously, but yeah. uh, this is a team I believe that has a talent to get in an Elite Eight. I really do. I really do believe that. They, if they if they get back yeah. their confidence and their shooting. So and and they're never they're not going to be a great defensive team. They don't have the size for it. I get it. Zed Key is so huge. He is quote unquote pun intended key for the defensive uh, game plan. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they they they're not going to be great defensively. They're giving that up a little bit uh, to try to get some more points. And right now, uh, Orange is kind of throwing a monkey wrench into that plan because he's not shooting well. Uh, you might as well start Jallo, in my opinion, if if, if uh, or somebody else you know, who can help on the perimeter. <laughs> Do I got time for a 30 second rant about no, Arns? Go ahead, buddy. Go. Oh, shit. Go ahead. Arns, if you're watching, I doubt it. But go yeah. to the gym right now. Go to the gym right now and work on your 15 foot shot, your 10 foot shot. Work on the pump fake at the three point line and driving to the elbow. Mm. Old school textbook stuff, bruh. I mean, because listen, teams have watched film, they're chasing Arns off the three point line. And they're being physical with him. I'm watching these games, and that's part, a part of his weakness is his cup game, his driving ability uh, is, is just not very strong. I, I forget what game it was, but he was on a fast break, and he literally stopped in the middle of the fast break close to the basket and turned around and threw the ball back out. Uh, if anybody can recall, you know what I'm talking yep, about. Yep. I, I was Everybody was upset with that. Yeah. Like, are you serious? Listen, this is Division One basketball, man. You can't be afraid to go to the cup and at least draw the foul. So if Arns can get some confidence to exploit those defenses that are overplaying his, his three-point shooting and make them pay by hitting those 15-foot shots or even driving and making something happen, that can really help uh, our, you know, our offense you know, not be so uh, stagnant when he's not on. Mm -hmm. you know, he's supposed to stretch the defense, man. You got you to gotta counter. You have the ability, man. Just do it. That's my pep talk. No, I agree. And by that, just a quick mention before we head out, uh, Justice been, we had 15 points last game. He wasn't bad, but we need him to be more consistent. And Seth Towns, brother, we need you to be a spark off the bench. We really need it. I know you've been hurt. I hope you get healthier. If, if it's an injury that's holding you back, I apologize. I'm not trying to call, call you out, but um, I do want to say that, that we need to, we need we just need all hands on deck, essentially, at this point. Yeah. Um, but anyway, man, Brandon, I really appreciate you coming on, buddy. That This has been a lot of fun. We'll do this again, obviously. And then for what it's worth, guys, uh, hopeful to have Brandon's content here on the Scarlet and Great Empire uh, YouTube channel coming up soon. Yeah, appreciate you, homie, man. It's, it's definitely uh, always good to link up with you and, and talk Buckeye as always, man. So we definitely got to do it again soon. Oh, definitely, definitely, guys. So anyway, as always, if like I said, find Brandon's information in the description below on the YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Buckeye Sports Talk with B Moses Facebook. Check him out. I got his Twitter handle uh, handy down in the description. Check him out. Follow him uh, for all the good Buckeye content that you want. Even if you're a fan of another team, you just want to know what's going on in Ohio State. Brandon's a man to follow. Uh, also, uh, find us on our podcast. All of, everything is in the description below. Follow us on Twitcher, or, uh, Stitcher. I'm sorry, Twitcher. Jeez, I'm I'm going yeah. brain, I'm going brain dead here. Uh, Stitcher, I'm going. Stitcher, Google Play, <laughs> iHeartRadio, uh, you know, iTunes, all that jazz on the on on, on the for the podcast for the audio version uh, for the video version right here. Scholar Great Empire, please like the video if you like it. Subscribe, share it, click the little bell, get the, uh, get the alerts when the video pops up. And we appreciate y'all for not only participating in the poll, but also tuning in to listen to uh, uh, me and Brandon Moses today. Brandon, as always, yeah. guys, goodbye. God bless and go Bucks. Go Bucks.